Okay, before I start talking about how, what we're going to do to make a modified balance D-valve, just to gonna give you a little refresher on how a D-valve works. The D-valve, the valve eccentric is in this position right here, it's driven by an eccentric off the main shaft, and the steam chest with the D-valve fits on the face like this, and the eccentric then pushes the D-valve back and forth, back and forth over the valve face. It's free to float, as you can see, free to float so that the pressure in the steam chest will actually push that valve against the valve face. Okay, one of the things critical to your understanding is that the D-valve, when it's sliding back and forth, okay, uh, over the valve face, the valve itself has to be free to be pushed by the pressure inside the steam chest against the valve face. That what that's what helps the seal, and um, really uh, makes the D valve functional. So that literally, as the valve wears out over time, it just reseats itself. It just seats itself right against the surface. Uh, they literally wear in rather than wear out as they're being used, which is one of the nice features of why a, a D-valve is, is uh, a good way of going on a steam engine. Now, other people will disagree with that, but I happen to prefer a balanced D-valve operation. In reversing and with some other things, the, the um, uh, valve itself is pushed strongly against the uh, valve face and what we want to do is relieve some of that pressure. That will mean that the engine should be a little more tractable at low speeds and um, also that uh, it should increase the horsepower a bit. Uh, the main thing that it does of course is it minimizes any wear on the, on the valve face. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this very standard D-valve into a balanced D-valve. So that's basically how the D-valve works. It actually controls both the, um, both the admission of steam and the relief of uh, the exhaust with the same valve. And what we're going to do is we're going to convert this into a um, uh, balanced D-valve to help the engine run a little bit more uh, efficiently and also uh, to relieve uh, the pressure on the D-valve which should make reversing a little bit easier. This is a slip eccentric that we have on this and to reverse this engine you have to shut the steam off to the engine, slip it around the other side a few degrees, um, almost 180 and then the engine will take off when you re-establish steam it'll take off in the other direction. So that's how the slip eccentric works on this reversing mechanism. Okay, the first thing that I have to do with this is because the steam chest cover down here admits the steam into the middle of the steam chest, uh, that's not going to work for a modified detail. So the first thing I have to do is make another steam chest cover um, uh, that's the same size but does not have this boss in it does not have the thread in it for um, the admission of steam. And so what we're going to do on this one is we are going to admit steam through the side of the steam chest in this area admit steam in through there and then make the steam chest cover perfectly flat and the ground surface. Now you'll see why in a, in a moment or two. Okay, let's take a look inside the steam chest and inside here we see three ports. A narrow one above, a narrow one below, and a wide one in the middle. This wide one in the middle is connected to the exhaust. And, there, and actually, since this is a compound engine, it'll feed the second cylinder. This one, this port up here, allows steam to go into the area above the piston. Piston goes down, and then when the piston comes back up, that is the above piston entrance and exit for the steam. 
and this is the below piston the one when the piston is all the way down steam is introduced into here pushes the piston back up and then when it exhausts it makes a circuit coming out of here and goes through the exhaust Okay, now we've got the regular D-valve in there, uh, you notice, and uh, what we can do is we're moving the engine around, and notice that the port, the below port is now fully uncovered, and as it's coming down, the above port, the above piston port becomes uncovered. And uh, in the meanwhile, as you can, can't see, behind it, the above piston port now is fully uncovered and is exhausting to the exhaust area. So that's what the D-valve is doing. But keep in mind that when there's full pressure inside the steam chest, this is being pushed to the valve face by the extreme uh, pressure in in the uh, uh, valve the valve rod, pushing it up and down, and it's free to, as you can see, it's free to move, uh, so that the pressure will, uh, in fact, push the D valve up against the valve face. So it is free to move. And just to reiterate, the there are two O rings in the balance cup, a thin O ring here inside you can see that there's an area outside the thin o-ring that is open to these small holes which connect to the high pressure chamber this puts high pressure behind the heavier o-ring helping to push it against the steam chest cover okay now we have the uh, balance cup mounted on the original d-valve notice that there are three cap screws holding it on this one here is left purposely left out because this connects the low pressure chamber of the original D-valve with this balance chamber of the balance cup. So that every part of the balance cup in this area here is at the same low pressure as the exhaust chamber of the original balance valve. That dramatically reduces the amount of pressure pushing the D-valve against the valve face. And to reduce that pressure significantly. So that'll allow the D-valve to slide back and forth uh, with much less pressure on it and absorb uh, less power from the engine in doing so. Should make it idle uh, more slowly, smoothly as well. But uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, this is the D valve once it has been converted to being a valance valve and you notice that the steam exhaust area, this area in here, now has a hole in it and the hole, as you can see, passes through to the inside of the balance chamber. That hole is threaded so that if we want to, we can actually fill it up. It's right behind. The original D-valve is still in place right behind it. And so what we've done is simply uh, put the balance cup behind it. And again, that produces an area in here that is at exhaust pressure, not at the high pressure of the steam chest. And that relieves some of the pressure of the pushing of the uh, D-valve against the valve face on the inside and should reduce the friction and allow us allow the engine to run more smoothly and that's about it so now we can put the steam chest cover on I'll put a clear one first so you can see it in operation and then we'll take it up uh, from there